So, Martin, you're going to talk about reconciling the S words of business. Which S words are they? Well, they're very similar words. There's two pairs of words, actually. It's stakeholder and shareholder, um, but also it's sustainability and sustainable competitive advantage. Uh, in practice, there's a huge gulf between these different words. And in a sense, I, I interpret the, the meaning of this conference to, uh, to think about uh, reconciling and bridging these, these closely related concepts. Okay, so shareholder v stakeholder, that relates directly to the theme of the conference. And sustainability v sustainable competitive advantage. Two sets of false dichotomies? Um, sort of depends on what we mean by false dichotomy. So there is a dichotomy, um, stressing one versus the other of those two pairs of words involves different actions, uh, different outcomes. Um, false in the sense that making these distinctions um, doesn't really solve anything. If we're trying to have corporations be more sustainable, societies more sustainable, I don't think merely pressing each distinction helps very much. But neither does saying that the, the, the dichotomy doesn't exist. Um, uh, so in practice, it is possible to argue that in theory on long enough time scales that shareholder value becomes stakeholder value. That's a, a possible argument to make. In practice, they're, they're, they're very different. Um, well, I think, I think the dichotomy is helpful in the following way. They, they, they both <clears throat> point us in the right direction, which is um, to, to consider sustainability problems for corporations or societies. We need to think on longer temporal scales and longer social scales. That's very much part of, part of the solution. But merely doing that alone um, does not solve the problem. Why? because we get into the issue of trade-offs. I can have jam today, I can have jam tomorrow, I can have jam for me, I can have jam for my partners um, or some gradation um, of the two. And they are different. Um, so we need also uh, methods to make trade-offs. Okay, uh, but you believe there is a way to resolve these tensions, uh, the tensions between these issues? A reconciliation has to be possible. There's no more pressing problem. I believe reconciliation is possible. Um, and I, I have a modest uh, uh, proposal. It's called Sustainable Business Model Innovation. And in essence, what it considers is uh, the linkage between individual corporate survival and fl flourishing and a sustainable relationship, economic relationship with the broader systems in which a company is embedded. And the important point is, it considers those two sets of variables at the very same time. Um, and the linkage is uh, corporate longevity. Okay, that's great. So finally, you say that um, we need a unifying framework to eliminate confusion and contradictions and to ensure that we can create a sustainable model for corporate capitalism. Is that what you're referring to? A unifying, uh, this unifying uh, framework? Partly. Yes, partly. Um, uh, I say partly because you, you have problems to solve at the level of corporations. I just addressed that one. Uh, but also you have an important collective agenda. Um, uh, if you think about it, climate change, we, we know uh, how bad it is. We know in which direction it's going. We know why it occurs. We know what we should be doing. We're not doing it. We have a, um, almost a pure collective action problem. And um, there is no global government to tell us what to do. Um, so we need to think urgently and creatively about collective action mechanisms. And um, so I'll have some comments to say about the significance of a new unit of analysis we have in business called the, um, the, the digital ecosystem. Seven of the world's largest companies, seven of the world's 10 largest companies um, are now digital ecosystems. And the governance for these digital ecosystems is, is still in flux, is still being invented. So I think it's a tremendous opportunity to think about collective app action opportunities on a very large and, and global scale against these broader dimensions of business. What you've just described actually suggests entirely new power dynamics. And in that situation, I guess, trying to establish shared values becomes even more important and more difficult. More difficult um, 
except that where there's an, an economic shared interest, it may be a little easier than, um, uh, than treating this as some sort of free bond political problem. So should we be looking more at what is as opposed to what ought to be and asking the question what ought to be? Um, well, I think, uh, I think thinking about what ought to be the case is, is, is important because, um, uh, you know, we're aspiring to a better way of doing things and we, we, there needs to be some sort of assertion about um, how to think about that better way of doing things. But, uh, you know, a lot of um, sustainability theory or shareholder value theory um, seems to ignore the peculiarity, peculiarities of, 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 and, and the foibles of practice. And so we, we also need to ask, and how do we get that done? Because merely asserting what is uh, in our long-term self-interest or what is logical or what is illogical doesn't mean that it will cease to be so in practice. I think we have to get, get the job done 